Hello, my name is Dusty Gedge and I'm the President of the European Federation of Green Roofs and Walls Associations. And we're here with my colleague Natalie to talk to you about how we can combine solar energy production on roofs with the delivery of biodiversity on the green roof. So my name is Natalie Baumann, um, I'm from the Zurich University of Applied Sciences and from the Competence Centre of Green Roofs. So I'm looking at the pollinators on biosolar roof and it's not just about honeybees, it's about solitary bees, wild bees, bumblebees and all other types of uh, pollinators. Now in Europe, uh, where we're from, um, there has always been a relatively good process, particularly in countries like Germany, in Switzerland and Austria, of actually combining solar panels on green roofs and that's, that's been an established technology. So if you go to a city like Freiburg, you'll, you'll look on a map and you'll see lots of green roofs with solar panels. Um, but the Biosolar Project is actually trying to take that a step further. And that step further is to try and ensure that the actual interface between the, the solar panel and the green roof also benefits nature conservation, biodiversity, and particularly pollinators. And that means we have to look at some of the research that's been done in um, countries like Switzerland and the UK on how you can maximize a green roof for biodiversity and how that can actually be improved by the positioning of solar panels on green roofs. So some cities of Switzerland like Basel, Zurich, uh, St. Gallen, they, they have policy, like they have both kind of policies for uh, renewable solar panels as well for green roofs. So they combine them, they bring them in a planning issue together and the requirements then in the construction um, projects will require and ask them to just put the combination to it. So it's actually a practice which exists uh, since several years and is working very well. Like in Switzerland, um, in London where I work and I help to sort of set green roof policies, we have quite quite strong renewable policies too. But the interesting thing is, in London, is um, when I've been recently auditing, uh, auditing parts of London in terms of where the green roofs are, it's quite interesting to see where the solar roofs are and where the green roofs are and where the solar green roofs are. And um, in certain neighbourhoods of London you'll find a big, big development which has to fulfil its renewable policy where you'll see that the solar panels are on a roof which is not greened and to meet the green roof requirement there is a separate green roof. However, that's, there are some interesting neighbourhoods, certainly the London Borough of Lewisham, I was recently auditing that, where 20% of the green roofs that have been installed over the last 15 years were actually solar roofs and green roofs combined. Now the point there is, is we need to actually look globally when we're looking at renewable energy planning policy and green roof policy to make those policies combined like they are in Switzerland to ensure that actually those two sustainable elements are married together to deliver the city's policies. Putting it into a, um, a governance issue is uh, I'm fortunate to sit on the European Commission's um, Green Infrastructure and uh, Ecosystem Services Working Group. But one of the, uh, the focuses for the Commission, like I suspect um, other major countries in the world, is how we can actually deliver green infrastructure and ecosystem services and biodiversity, but also how we can create a low carbon economy. And the interesting thing about biosolar roofs is actually they're a very, very good way to connect the low carbon renewable uh, agenda to the delivery of green infrastructure and ecosystem services. And certainly in a European context, the, the strategy for, or the policy for, um, for, for the Commission is very, very much focused on the delivery of biodiversity across the continent. And because of this work on the biosolar roof, we can link the production of renewable energy and the delivery of biodiversity in urban areas together and also suggest a way that the smart city agenda and the high technology agenda can work with a relatively low technology agenda which is green roofs and, and biodiversity and actually make um, win-wins all around. And so somebody investing, whether it's a corporation or a, a, a city in buildings that 
can deliver renewable and biodiversity. They really are addressing the agenda of ecosystem services, climate change adaptation and the provision of biodiversity. We are working with a building contractor in Sins, uh, which is in close to Luzerne, central Switzerland. And this is an entrepreneur who really got the innovation of, of green roofs and solar energy. And since we work with him together, as well with finding solutions, how to use uh, natural resources, uh, promote indigenous species and as well pollinators he was always on on the run and on the forehead to find new solutions that he can promote his business and bring more um, business cases into uh, and task for his business so actually this is a good example to show that also with contractors building contractors who think for the future in and innovations everything is possible to bring that together and he is the best example for us as well um, because if you come from a university you will always say yes it's, everything is possible but we can show it and we can bring people there to show yes it is possible on a business side as a small company to bring that up this combination and have profits out of it and turnover so the example of, uh, uh, of the building contractor in Sins is a, is a good example because I've met the gentleman in question, I've known him for 15 years. As a, as a person, as a human being, he's actually very, very interested in nature conservation and, and how he can deliver that. But as a business, he needs to be able to interface with his, his customers. And he's found that actually, by actually combining these two technologies, not only can he get quality of work but he can actually sort of grow his business and be seen to be an innovator so it's not just about high-end governance city governance planning it's actually about driving an economy that actually people can benefit from both in terms of their own work-life balance and also their business in terms of how much money they would be able to make Here we are on the Messe Hall in Basel in Switzerland. I first visited this roof in 2002 um, and it was built as a conventional sedum green roof, um, 80 millimetres, which is about three inches of growing medium planted with sedums. And also we've got these um, huge army of solar panels. Um, about five or six years after it was originally installed, our colleagues in Switzerland um, wanted to try and improve it from a, from a biodiversity point of view and um, what you can see on this roof now is all this, um, these areas of wood circles and wood lines which create these microhabitats. And, and taking those ideas of microhabitats they, they start to look at how they could seed and find different plant communities beneath and at either side of the panel. Creating uh, microhabitats means as well creating, bringing more diversity. That means putting wood on it is just protecting plants to, for drying out because the wind cannot attack or dry it out and there is more humidity kept within the wood and underneath on the substrate because there's as well uh, more shade. So actually we are supporting in with a small element with these uh, microhabitats uh, great diversity for fauna and flora. In my back you can see another solar panel so this is actually the same idea like before with the wood bringing an element, a structural element into it which has the same function. The first is shading, the second is uh, to gather humidity in order that in front and in the back of the panels you will have more uh, plant species possibility, diversity and also density and underneath or below the panel you've got less uh, plants because it's too shaded and humidity is not that much there so you're creating again several microhabitats with the help of the solar panels. In Switzerland uh, we as an ecologist created plant lists which suit best the front habitat of a panel the back uh, habitat of the panel as well and underneath the panel so you get different plants association with the different ecological needs 
uh, which also depends on the shade, mid-shaded and sunny exposition. But then, with this diversity of different habitats and different plant association, you just give more diversity and possibilities to pollinators as well. Here I am in Lausanne, and I've never been on a green roof in the Swiss, French part of Switzerland. And this is the largest green roof in Lausanne. And recently it's been uh, covered in photovoltaics. And there's some interesting design features which we put in here because behind the solar panels they needed more substrate to ballast out the panels. This narrow strip here we have the usual kind of Swiss ecological functions. We have uh, um, small mounds which have different vegetation on them and we have some logs, some tree branches and actually up here you can see these uh, these pipes, half pipes which is actually uh, it's very very hot on the green roof and this gives some shelter to invertebrates and also when there's ground nesting birds that actually gives uh, the small chicks somewhere to hide from the uh, from the crows and the things that could predate on them the classic green roof plants vipers bugos echium vulgare and everywhere you find it you find bumblebees and as we said this is a big big roof it's probably half the width of a football pitch but if the length of a football pitch and it's uh, packed with energy producing panel and it's packed with a very dry mix of sedums and native wildflowers so it's good for pollinators I first got involved in green roofs because of a rare bird called black red starts and when I first came on this roof it was quite it was it was great because actually there was lots of black red starts I think there was at least four or five the first time I came um, actually feeding and perching on the panels and doing their business I was very fortunate to be involved in the design of the largest green roof for biodiversity at the London Olympics which was on the media center it's actually a very celebratory project for me is because the London Olympics had their own biodiversity um, action plan and the way we designed that roof was to meet that biodiversity action plan but during the process of the design um, there was a need to also meet the Olympics photovoltaic action plan and the media centre roof was chosen as a place to put PVs onto I had to work very closely with how the PVs could create the correct microhabitat for those action plan species, um, but to ensure that actually um, the PVs were met in terms of the target that the Olympics had. Last year, um, the roof was monitored by the University of East London, and at least four of the Olympic Biodiversity Action Plan targets were met on that roof including a small rare moth, which is called the Tope Flax Brocade Moth, uh, Bombus Humilis, which is a, a very rare um, bumblebee in South East England, Black Red Starts, which I am very well known for, nested on that roof and used that roof, and um, a very, very small beetle, which is very, very rare and associated with uh, Autumn Hawk Bite, which was deliberately planted. It's important when we, we do green infrastructure in the built environment that we empathise with the people we work with who are in other trades, other, other sectors. I'm trying to be now a person of uh, solar panel manufacturing or industry or even a company uh, with solar panels and thinking about vegetation, vegetation and roof uh, combined with solar panels, having vegetation in front of the panels, bringing shade on the cells and disturbing the production, whatever, and just thinking, no, 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 this is not going to work and it will have an effect on my uh, turnover and all that thing is relying to the business. But the question is, is that really true? I can quite understand their first reaction to vegetation in front of their panel is that that vegetation will have a negative impact on the energy that my panel is going to produce. Part of the process of delivering a good biosolar green roof is actually 
understanding the requirements of the green roof and the solar panel so that that interface is done well. However, when it's done badly, and generally it's done badly is where there's an overemphasis on the solar panel production and not the green roof, is problems can happen. And I've recently been to visit a couple of roofs in London where um, the solar panels have been packed, packed too densely into the green roof. They've used the wrong panels and actually the whole thing has been designed very, very inappropriately to the interface. And in this, in one of the instances particularly, um, why I was called in because there was a, there was a, um, there was a belief that the fact that the panels were only working at 10% efficiency is that the invasive vegetation that was caused by the bad design was actually causing a 90% failure. There is no way that it caused a 90% failure, it possibly caused a 5% failure. Now the point there for me is it's easy to blame it on the green roof and not onto bad fixings, bad panels, inefficient technology that has been inappropriately put onto a roof. In my whole life of green roofs, the whole construction industry will always blame the green roof first. And in my whole life, it's never been the green roof's fault. Indeed, we are talking about bad cases and bad things, or oh, is it done well, whatever, but I think the whole important thing about it is to have maintenance, whatever it is. If it's solar panel or just green roof or combination, there has to be uh, maintenance. And in the best practice, coming back to my company, my entrepreneur in SINs, for example, there is the solar technician, solar panel technician, who has a knowledge about the plants, the green roof, so when he goes up the roof, he knows actually he can control the solar panels as well the vegetation. What does that mean to controlling the vegetation? Is to check if uh, there are maybe invasive plants or if there's something unwished on the roof or just blocking somehow in front of the panels. So just take it away. It's very important uh, when you plan a biosolar roof that you get all the specialists and professionals at one table, around the table, and this is about the ecologist, the plant specialist, the green roofer, the architect, the engineer, the waterproofer, to really get through all these layers that they, in order to really develop and design a perfect quality biosolar roof. In many ways, in terms of target setting, renewable energy is a much easier um, Thing for building professionals to target and succeed in. Um, you put up so many panels, you get so much energy. Targeting for biodiversity in the built environment is much, much more difficult, but it is achievable. Building professionals, architects, engineers, ecologists can use biodiversity to actually improve the nature of a roof, not only for energy, but also biodiversity. And we believe that actually that is the future of green, sustainable roofs. Renewable energy, biodiversity, green roofs, sustainable water, all of those can be encompassed under the heading of the biosolar roof agenda. <laughs>